Hi everybody, it's Ashley of Day to Day Social Work. I am a private online tutor and I specialize in assisting people to pass the license exam in social work on the master's and bachelor's level. Uh, you can find me online at daytodaysocialwork.wix.com slash my site and you can find me on YouTube at Day to Day Social Work. This video is about KSAs. So I'm always mentioning the KSAs to people when I give them their free online consultation when they contact me for tutoring. And I would say about 25% of people know what the KSAs are and the other 75% just have never heard of them or don't know what they are. So I wanted to make a video that is specific to the KSAs. So KSAs are knowledge, skills, and abilities for the license exam and it's basically an outline of what to expect on the exam it's a very good tool to use to study by if you are just overwhelmed and don't know where to start um, with all the information maybe you've been out of school for years and years and years and you just don't know where to start or maybe you just graduated and you still don't know where to start so the KSAs are a good way to um, give yourself an outline and an outline and a um, I guess like a study plan to, to help you make a study plan to know what you want to study. So uh, the KSAs are easily found online. You can just Google it. You can um, also go to the ASWB website and they have them for each of the exams. Uh, the thing though is that you have to make sure that if you are just Googling the uh, KSAs, then you have to make sure that you're looking at the right KSAs because we know that the exam changed in January 2018 and there are still copies of the old KSAs available online for before 2018 so make sure that when you are googling and looking for them and I'll put, I'll put a link uh, in the description box below to the most current uh, KSAs as of the date of this video so um, make sure that you are looking at the right KSAs. So I can say from the KSAs for last year's exam to this year's exam seems to be a lot more detailed um, as far as what they want you to know for the exam because the one from last year is just a whole bunch of topics and didn't really uh, I guess go into a whole lot of detail and these don't go into a lot of detail either but there's more clarification on what they want you to know so um, there are nine pages uh, it's a PDF the link that I'm gonna put in the description box is a PDF nine pages so you can print them out and I always tell people to go through the list of things mark out what you are familiar with that you don't need to study and highlight what you do need to study and what you aren't familiar with and that will give you an outline of what you need to prepare for and know for the exam so when I look at this um, document from the ASWB it says content outlines and KSAs what are KSAs so a KSA is a knowledge skills and ability statement these statements describe the discrete knowledge uh oh sorry <laughs> okay um, so these statements describe the discrete knowledge components that may be tested in each part of the examination and are the basis for individual test questions so that's what the KSAs are um, as we know the exam consists of four different sections you have human development diversity and behavior in the environment you have assessment and intervention planning you have uh, interventions with clients and client systems that's one of the new uh, t uh, headings it used to be indirect and direct practice now it's called interventions with clients and client systems um, and then you finally have uh, professional relationships values and ethics I always tell people make sure you read the code of ethics all the way through at least one time before you take your exam because it's really the backdrop of the exam um, and of social work in general so make sure you read that the percentages of course um, have changed from last year to this year's exam um, so not very much uh, the they changed by like three percent on a certain category and I don't want to say which one because I'm not I don't have it right here in front of me but I believe it was the uh, interventions with clients and client systems uh, changed to weigh just a little bit more than it used to be and so it's important to know these uh, KSAs because 
a lot of people struggle. This is what I, from what I've gathered since I've been tutoring since 2015, what I've gathered is that um, a lot of people struggle on direct and indirect practice, which is now called clients and client systems. And then they also struggle with uh, assessment and intervention. And that's because people think like they would in real life on this exam and you have to be able to change your way of thinking to the way that the test writer wants you to think so when i'm tutoring people all the time i hear well at my job this happened and i would do this or this is what happened to me before and i would do this or if this was actually real life i would do this which is all great and fine but on this exam you have to think like the test writer wants you to wants you to think and that's like the perfect by the book social worker who would follow all these KSAs and um, or know all these KSAs and be able to answer the questions as the perfect by the book social worker so the human development diversity and behavior in the environment in the environment section uh, for the master's exam and when I speak about the KSAs I'm gonna be talking about the master's exam because that's what I tutor for primarily um, they have subsections, so they have um, that section itself counts for 27% of the exam, but then they have subsections, so they have uh, human growth and development, and then they have concepts of abuse and neglect, and then they have diversity and social economic justice and oppression, and then they go to the next section, so which is assessment and intervention planning, but they break this stuff down so if you don't know what you need to know for the exam this is where you need to go make sure you look at these KSAs and again go through all of this stuff mark out what you are already familiar with and then um, highlight what you aren't familiar with and that you need to study and then from there you can make flashcards you can write out your notes you can do um, whatever it is you want to do to help you learn this stuff for the exam. Now, of course, all of this stuff on here will probably not be on the exam, but this is what you need to prepare for. Um, let's see. They talk about the impact of caregiving on families, crisis intervention theories, models of family life, education, and social work practice, um, the impacts of stress, trauma, and violence. Uh, and then they go into talking about gender and gender identity concepts, sexual orientation concepts, criminal justice systems. So all this stuff is under the heading of um, human development, diversity, and behavior in the, in the environment. So then they go on to assessment and intervention planning. That's 24% of the exam. They break this down to biopsychosocial history and collateral data, assessment methods and techniques, assessment methods and techniques continued and intervention planning so and some of the topics under these are uh, let's see the components of a biopsychosocial assessment the indicators of somatization somatization dealing with the body you know I can't pronounce everything and then another thing too y'all just because not for nothing but I finally got my Invisalign uh, taken out and then now I have to wear a retainer every night so my bite is a little bit different which is why I'm struggling with some words sometimes but anyway I just thought I would throw that out there um, then they talk about um, the indicators of sexual dysfunction and methods to assess ego strengths and all that kind of stuff that's under that section and then you have the third section which is interventions with clients and client systems that's 24 percent there are a few subsections under there and they list all this stuff out and again i'm going to put the link in the description box and then that final section is professional relationships values and ethics that's 25 percent of the exam and uh they talk about confidentiality professional values and ethical issues, uh, accreditation and or licensing requirements, the roles of uh, supervisee and supervision. They talk about uh, the components of social worker client and client system relationships. And they go into all this detail. So I don't want to keep beating the dead horse, but you kind of get it. This is what you need. You need to make sure you look at the KSAs and get a good understanding of what they are and how they can help you prepare for this exam. So 
um, that's pretty much it for this video I didn't want to make it too long but I did want to just throw this out there because we have a lot of new people to the channel and I just want to make sure that you have the correct resources to study of course I have tons of videos on content and material including um, the amended code of ethics um, since they changed that along with the new exam this year so make sure you check everything out subscribe to the channel like the videos if you like them um, and leave your comments and your feedback if the videos are helpful for you if you feel like I left something out um, if you are educated on a certain topic and you want to make a, a, a video then let me know and I can post it to the channel so everything is interactive here um, somebody asked me why I am why they should tutor with me as opposed to someone else and I kind of just said you know because I'm a genuine person I'm not here to um, take advantage of anybody because I'm a social worker too and I need to help with the exam too um, I'm not in competition with anybody I just do me you know I do private one-on-one -on -one tutoring and the videos have been super helpful for a lot of people and that's just what I do I'm the only person that does the tutoring and uh, I've had great success stories which you can find in the testimonials on the channel so I just I don't see myself being in competition with anyone else there are a lot of great people who tutor um, and people who provide resources and test questions and stuff like that so I do get feedback on some of those as well and I will let you know if I know of any who are not out to do what's right by you um, just from information that I've gathered from people who I've tutored before who have used some other resources but there are plenty of great other resources out there including on YouTube um, but I do think that I am a very good resource and I'm very successful in helping people to pass the exam. Again, no one should make you the promise that tutoring with them will give you a 100% guarantee that you will pass the exam because nobody can make that promise to you. Because once you get on the exam, it's just you and the computer and your knowledge and your abilities, your knowledge, skills, and abilities. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's that. Um, again, I'm not in this to make money at all. That's why even right now, currently, I have the pre-recorded videos on uh, a sale from now until August 31st for the summer or through August 31st for the summer. Normally, that rate is $250 for the five sessions uh, because the videos are, there are five sessions two videos for each session and each session is normally fifty dollars but the whole package together of course when you add that up is two hundred and fifty dollars but right now that package is on sale for a hundred and fifty dollars for the summer because you know I'm not in this to make money like that I'm here to help and if I lower the price by hundred and fifty dollars can help some people out throughout the summer because they have their kids and they just graduated and they're looking for jobs and all whatever else we all go through then that's fine with me and we can start back on the regular price in the fall when school starts back or whatever I decide for um, for the fall. So until next time, I will see you all later and uh, happy studying. You can and will pass the exam. This, exa this exam does not define you as a social worker and um, you will get over that hump. So until next time, I'll see you later.